Hey everyone, my name is Chase Weber. I'm an occupational therapist and certified hand therapist with Labor Therapy Center. Uh, and some of you may not know, but I'm also a vestibular rehab specialist. Um, it's something I've been doing uh, for about 10 years now, for as long as I've been a uh, occupational and certified hand therapist. Um, but I I've seen some things here lately on, on Facebook, you know, uh, friends, family members that uh, are asking about, um, you know, if you've ever had, has anybody ever had vertigo or know someone who's had vertigo? Because they're, they're looking to understand why are they dizzy and, and what maybe somebody else has done that's helped them that they might be able to do to correct their problem. Um, and, you know, part of the problem is, is that not all vertigo is the same. Uh, and it's definitely not treated the same. So what one person had that was causing dizziness isn't necessarily going to fix what another person has. So that's why it's very important that you get evaluated by specialists to first figure out what's going on and then be able to attack the problem uh, properly because you could be doing something someone else did and spending a lot of time trying to do that one treatment and not have the results that you, that you need. Okay. Um, some of the responses that people will give them is, you know, take sinus medication that helped me or go look up the Epley maneuver. It, it worked wonders. And, and, you know, both of these are correct. Both of these can fix dizziness, but they can also be wrong if they're not attacking the correct problem. Okay. Uh, the Epley maneuver is performed when there's a mechanical issue. Okay. And what I mean by mechanical is that there's a structural issue, something's out of place and needs to be put back into place. Um, whereas someone with sinus medication is taking uh, that because they have some inflammation or fluid buildup um, that's causing them to have these issues. Okay, so that's why it's important to first know what you might be have, what what you might have, uh, and pick the right solution for that problem. Okay. Um, the two most common issues causing vertigo that uh, we'll tend to get into the clinic is BPPV uh, or loose crystal. Uh, some people will know that terminology or a neuritis labyrinthitis, uh, which is basically a hypofunction uh, in your vestibular system. Now, you have, you have a vestibular system, but two separate systems, you know, a right side and a left side. Um, and basically a hypo function uh, is where one of them is not working properly, not giving uh, the right information. And so when the right and the left is sending the signals to the brain as far as what's going on, the discrepancy between the two is giving you the dizziness or the uh, poor coordination, uh, poor functioning uh, during the day. Okay. So how do you know what you're dealing with? How do you, how do you decide? Okay. Uh, and, and this is, again, you should still go see a specialist to get the diagnosis. But if you're trying to determine what's the best course of action or, or how to even start looking for some exercises to do for yourself, it's important to separate what, what is it that you're dealing with in the first place. Okay. So let's say we think that there's a possibility that you have uh, BPPV or loose crystal, okay? So this one, as we talked about, is a mechanical issue. Uh, so if you see on this picture that we have right here, uh, the little uh, crystals down there at the bottom in that circle, and they're called otoconia, um, they can become displaced, okay? And they'll make their way into the semicircular canals and basically they're triggered with head position changes where gravity is pulling. Okay. So most of the time well, people will come into the clinic and I'll ask them a couple of questions to kind of decide, you know, do I think that this is a possibility that it's, it's a loose crystal. Um, and, and the, the two major ones that I'll find that are consistent is uh, they get dizzy when they're laying down or the head's tilted back. Uh, or if they're rolling over in bed uh, from their right side to their left side or vice versa, they'll say they'll get dizzy. Um, and the dizziness is only lasting for, for seconds, you know, about 30 seconds. It doesn't really last longer than that. So, for instance, if I lay back uh, like I'm going to bed and I, I'll get the room spinning and I'll get dizzy, feeling like I'm about to fall out of bed, it'll stop. If I don't move, it'll stop, you know, within 30 seconds. 
So that's a, those are two big signs that that's a good indication that it's uh, BPPV. Most people uh, do not uh, say that they're getting dizzy when they're just moving about, walking around, or anything like that. This is uh, usually a gravity-dependent situation. Um, so as long as their head isn't tilted back or too far forward, uh, or they're not going into a laying down position, uh, then they're probably okay. Okay. So how do you test for the actual loose crystal? So this is the hall pike Dix test. Um, basically, they're sitting in a, in a, a hall pike position. You want to rotate your head 45 degrees, right or left. It, it doesn't necessarily matter because you're going to check both sides. And then they'll lay back. And the head usually is hanging off of the bed or the table when they're in, in the clinic, about 30 degrees back. And this is to allow gravity to really pull on those loose crystals to come down into the position that will give us um, the symptoms. Um, now, if you're doing this for yourself, um, you're going to feel dizzy, you're going to feel uh, the room spinning, but what you won't be able to see, and this is what, as a practitioner, what we're looking for is what we call a nystagmus, which is a involuntary eye motion. Basically, the eyes tend to kind of have a little torsion uh, when you're starting to feel the symptoms, and then it goes away. Um, it's important to see this. So if you have somebody that's at home with you, it's important to let them look at your eyes, let them see if they can see the nystagmus. If not, you know, maybe grab your cell phone and record uh, your eyes. That way you can go back and look and see because uh, it's not enough to just get dizzy when you're going back. You really need to see if there's this nystagmus in there um, triggering uh, that's being triggered when the uh, crystals are dropping. The um, reason why this is important is because if you if you get dizzy but you're not getting the nystagmus, then you, you probably don't have the loose crystal, okay? Um, and you have something else that's going on. Okay, what could that other thing be going on? It's vestibular neuritis or labyrinthitis. You will still get the dizzy sensation with head position changes um, that you won't necessarily get a nystagmus with, okay? Um, how is this different? Well, with a, a vestibular neuritis, uh, usually the uh, initial findings, oh, sorry. Okay, you get sudden onset, vertigo, vomiting, nausea, imbalance. It lasts for one to three days. So you feel dizzy all the time, not just with laying down, not just with position changes of the head, but just sitting there, you're going to feel off. Um, and usually on the first day, there's not much you can do about a vestibular neuritis or, or a labyrinthitis. You pretty much, the first 24 hours, take some nausea medication, go lay down, and the next day you can then start to perform exercises or perform uh, rehab in a sense on yourself to, to try and uh, correct these issues. Um, so that's one of the, the big difference between is it is it a loose crystal or is it something else? It's loose crystal, you're only going to get dizzy when you lay back or have a drastic head position change um, where gravity is pulling on those crystals. Vestibular neuritis is you're going to feel off just sitting there and then you will get increase in dizziness when you move the head around in space, tilting forward. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, uh, if you're turning the head left and right while walking, uh, that will really kind of stir people up. Uh, so those are some differences. Uh, how, how can you tell the two apart? Um, BPPV is probably the most common and then your uh, vestibular neuritis is the second most common uh, out of the bunch, okay? And so vestibular neuritis, what's causing that? Uh, viral infection, um, and it's, you know, inflammation inside that system that, again, it needs to kind of subside. Um, so BPPV, you can do exercises and it can be corrected within, you know, one to two treatments of it, whereas a vestibular neuritis as long as you have the inflammation in the system, you're probably going to feel off, okay? Now, you can do a lot of exercises to um, compensate your system to where it's not as sensitive and you don't have as much dizziness or nausea 
uh, from movements, but you may still feel off for a good little bit, okay? So the other one is uh, a labyrinthitis. Um, so the difference between neur the neuritis and the labyrinthitis is that I mean, you're still going to have the dizziness, the gait instability, but the difference is you're going to have some hearing loss with the labyrinthitis, okay? Um, and this one is something you definitely want to uh, go see a specialist about, make sure everything's all right. Um, but again, the exercises that you're going to do for a neuritis or labyrinthitis are completely different than what you're going to do for the BPPV. So it's, it's very important to know what you're treating before you really get into exercises uh, to, to treat your system, okay? Um, so why see a specialist? Again, targeted exercise program produces faster results than a generalized program, okay? You just could be spinning your wheels if you're trying something that you, you heard from somebody or read off the internet without truly knowing what you have, okay? So I'd like to thank everybody for taking time to listen to this, and I hope that it helps. Um, he, we here at Labor Therapy uh, Center, we're, we're here for anything you might need. So we appreciate if, uh, if you found this informative, please let us know. And if there's any other information you guys would like to know about, tell us what it is. We can put something together for you. Thank you.